and I think that'll be the hardest adjustment for me. Figuring out how to make the relationships I build as genuine as possible because that's what I care about. So how have you done that in your life so far? Listening. Um, and just caring about who that person is at core. That's important and I think I've been, I've been very blessed to just, I've been blessed with this sort of, um, I don't know, superpower to just read people and, and choose who I want in my life because I've, I've come across so many people. Um, so I've been super blessed to just have that, that superpower, I guess. Um, that, that's what I'm gonna call it because it is, because a lot of people, it's very hard for, for people to, um, to understand the purpose of other people and why they have come into their life. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been very blessed to have that. So I don't know if that makes sense. It makes a hundred percent sense, and I think and I don't take it for granted. I'm curious when you've been on a team. That's so when I interview people for my team, I always ask, "What's something that you're working on?" And you can tell really quickly if someone is saying what you think mm -hmm. you want to hear, or whether they really do believe that personal development and growth is part of a life's journey. Mm -hmm and that no matter where you get, no matter what perch on the mountain you're on, we're all working on something, Yep, right? We are, we, we are working on something, and, and Ryan and I were just talking about how everyone has a story to tell, mm -hmm. and you just have to be willing to listen to it, mm -hmm. um, to just get an understanding of who that person really is. Um, and I've been fortunate just to meet like a lot of people and just to hear those stories and to understand, I think that's why I, I, I understand people because I've been able to travel the world, I've been able to interact with a ton of people, um, but more importantly, I've been able to learn their stories. Mm -hmm. And um, I think when you, when you have that sort of, um, I don't know, when you, when you have that privilege to, to do that, you take full advantage of it. So, How do you make the time, especially now that you've had this experience here with Ryan and this group, how do you make the time within a business context, are you finding, to hear those stories and to make sure you give enough space to that part? I'm figuring it out. Um, I, I think that was one thing I was gonna ask you about is just the balance. Like, I'm just doing a fellowship here. I don't have the responsibilities that everyone else have here, but I find it hard to balance um, everything that's coming my way because I'm a perfectionist and I want to make sure everything is done right. <laughs> uh, so I would love to get your opinion on that in terms of how you balance being a badass CEO, um, a mother, a wife, and on top of that, having a genuine sort of care and concern for the people that you're working with and the people that you meet. There's a lot in <laughs> all of that. And I'm, I feel like I'm figuring this out every week because just when you have the routine down, just when you think you've got it solved, the universe will throw you something that will either call into question how you're approaching things or there'll be a complicating factor, right? I think, you know, what I try to do, what I've always tried to do is on a quarterly basis, kind of map out what I need to get done for the business, what I'm working on with my kids, um, and for myself and for my own health, which is something I don't think people talk necessarily about. And then I go down to the week of what I'm gonna try to get done during the week. To be a mother running a company, to have any semblance of time for myself, you just have to be really organized, right? Anything is possible if you've got great people around you and you stay really organized. So I just make sure I know what I need to get accomplished and then we plan down to the week who's going to be where when and where I'm going to be in and out of the business because okay. there's no such thing, I talk about this a lot, there's no such thing in my mind of work-life balance that doesn't okay. exist. I think you have one life and your life is like a pie and your pie has lots of different slices. Some is your professional career, some is your family, some is my relationships with friends, some is myself, some is my own growth and then there are lots of other things. I'm sure you've got passions outside of just basketball and work. And the question becomes when you're looking at the pie of your life, which piece needs the most attention? Because you can't give equal attention to everything. And so what that takes, I think, is incredible organization to say, okay, what do I need to focus on right now? And where, what do I need to do 
to move these pieces of the pie in harmony with each other. Okay. And ultimately to me, and I can get much more tactical but, but, with so you. So does the size of the pie change or the attention that you give to the pie? I think that, change. look, I mean, this is all sort of, you know, metaphorical, yes. but I say this to people all the time. Your life is your life, right? And your life will expand to fit what you want it to fit within. So, people, you know, young women will say to me, uh, "I can't. I'm not ready to have kids. I'm not at the right place in my career, or I'm not at the right place in life." You know what? You're gonna figure it out. And we got one shot at this life. So if you think that now is the time to have kids, then go for it because you never know what the universe has in store for you. I also put a lot of faith in wow. things. I'm a big believer, so I'm, and I'm a big glasses half full person. So I, while I learned to evaluate the downside, I'm a big believer in the upside. So I just say go for it. But wow. the one thing I will say with the, going back to the pie, mm -hmm. presence in where you're focused is so important. So if I'm gonna be at home with my kids at night, mm -hmm. the phone is off, it is in a drawer, the phone rings, I'm not picking it up. We are playing Scrabble on the floor and that's what we're doing for that period of time. When I'm at work, I'm at work. Okay. And I'm really present and focused on that. And I think sometimes you get distracted when you're trying to multitask too much. I think you gotta be really present to what it is. Even in a conversation, if you're thinking in the back of your head what I'm gonna say next in this conversation, then I'm actually not really listening to you. I'm not present to the story you're telling or the point that you're trying to make. And I think that takes real discipline to hold yourself present to a conversation, to hold yourself present to playing Scrabble, junior Scrabble, boring <laughs> Scrabble on the floor. Holy moly. But I think that's where the, wow. you know, the great impact comes. If you really make yourself present and make yourself available. And I think it's really awesome what you're doing here to really dedicate yourself to this fellowship and to Absolutely. learn as much as you can and throw yourself in as deep as possible and really be present to that mm -hmm. opportunity. I think great things will come out of that. Holy moly, I needed that. I needed everything you just said. You just gave me everything that I needed to know, um, but it's extremely overwhelming in that sense. So, um, All you oh need God. is a great crew of people around you mm -hmm. and a plan. I think where people fail is they don't have a plan. Okay. What needs to, you're transitioning into a new career. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to be in 90 days or in 180 days? What are the decisions that you need to make? Get really organized. Okay. And then practice gratitude and reflection and forgiveness. Because I got to tell you, I mess a lot of stuff up. Things that you miss, emails that you miss, yeah. appointments that you miss. Okay. And you just have to forgive yourself as you go through it and know that tomorrow is another day. And I'm sure you know this better than I do. You're never as bad as they say you're on your worst day. You're never as good as they say you are on your best day. You're doing just fine. Hmm. Are you writing, physically writing down your 90 days, your 180 days OKRs? I know you mentioned that in your speech and I've read the John Doerr book. I do. So, so you physically write it down? I do. Okay. I do. All right. Because you if you sharing? write it down, <laughs> then it's there in front of you. And sometimes it's as simple as just notes on my phone mm -hmm. that I'll make. And things move around. It's not to mm -hmm. say it's the hard and fast plan. But especially for, I think, where you are, because there are so many exciting things right around the corner that you're focused on, being really mindful of that. And then also, that practice will cause you to ask questions and know how to build a team around you of people that you can call to say, oh, I mean, I need to get a crib. There's a totally simple, easy <laughs> thing. Who's, who's gonna be my, my mentor on this path and this journey? Because I know I have benefited so much from wonderful people who have seen it, done it, lived it, mm -hmm. learned it before, and I, uh, I am shameless in asking questions. Mm -hmm. um, and you need that great group of people around you. That's where Ryan and the fellowship has been so wonderful. But even like my mom squad, mm -hmm. you know, I know that they, We'll have the answer. You just put it out to that group and they will, you, you surround yourself with good people, they'll rally around you. I'm, I'm confident that I have a lot of good people around me. Um, that's one thing I can hang my hat on for sure. So. Well, I said, I think earlier in my Soul Cycle class this morning, MK told me that I should breathe into the possibility and not be scared of the unknown. And I think sometimes you hear these wow. people say mm -hmm. things around you and I, it made me think, you're right, why am I holding on to that? Why do I think that's not mm -hmm. possible? Because you'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. what, what are your biggest fears? Do you have any? Oh gosh, 
Biggest fears. Mm. We all have them. Fear is a really interesting word. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing or idea of fear is really around family and protecting my family. When you have kids, you'll see this very soon, everything changes. And it's, it sounds dramatic and you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm good, I got, I'm, I'm good. The truth of it is that baby becomes part of your life and you're never gonna be the same because there's always going to be someone out there in the world that you're responsible mm -hmm. for. And that moment of perspective, it, I know it changed me as a human being for the better in that I realized, oh my gosh, the world isn't actually about me at all. Mm -hmm. It's about this person now. But with that beauty and that relationship, um, and that responsibility does come a bit of fear, right? Because mm -hmm. I think about him all the time. I, you want to make sure you're setting them up for success, both just the tactics of, you know, does he know how to cross the street and look the right way, but also is he gaining confidence in what he's doing? Is this the right path for him? Have we chosen the right school for him? You, you ask all of these questions. Mm -hmm. um, the good news is we're fortunate and there's food on the table, so he's gonna stay alive, yeah. provided he <laughs> eats everything in my refrigerator. Pints mm -hmm. of blueberries, pints of strawberries, pints of raspberries. Um, but I think that if there's one thing that keeps me up at night, I think it's just thinking about making sure my children mm -hmm. are set up for success. Yep. All right, and what, what did you do before uh, Soul Cycle? I should probably know this. Uh, no, no sweat. Um, the, the short answer is I, I used to run business development for Equinox, oh. the fitness company. I like that. Okay. And so in my role there, I was looking for new growth opportunities mm -hmm. for the Equinox company. Um, and we ended up acquiring SoulCycle in 2011 when there were seven locations, okay. all in New York. Okay. So I joined the founders at that point to start to build out the team and the business. But my whole background um, prior to joining um, SoulCycle was all corporate development and business development, which was looking for acquisition and partnership opportunities for the brands I work for. So I worked for Starwood Hotels. Um, and worked on corporate development mm -hmm. for them. I worked uh, for the Virgin Group for Richard Branson on the start of Virgin America, the domestic air carrier. Um, and then I went to Equinox to run BizDev for them to look for non-core growth opportunities. And then I went to SoulCycle as a head of operations, which was a total departure. Big difference between corporate finance mm -hmm. and running a P&L every day. Mm -hmm. Having a big team of people to motivate, something that you're probably much naturally better at than I am by virtue of how your background. Um, and that was really scary because I really didn't know what I was doing and I had a belief in the business and I could see where we needed to go, but I had to learn a lot about how to drive a business through people, which is just fundamentally different than looking at spreadsheets and trying to decide if it's a good investment. Mm -hmm. So so not knowing anything about it, why would you take it? You said you didn't really know <laughs> what you were doing, so like, why would you venture into that? I loved the opportunity. I love what SoulCycle is and what our yeah. mission is. Um, and I, mean, I really you had a clue what you wanted to do. Right. You know, I, I, um, my father's an entrepreneur. Okay. And so he always built and operated businesses. So I think I had a little bit of an itch around that, but okay. it wasn't as if I laid out a plan and was like, I will operate a company one day. So it's opportunistic. You meet great people. Mm -hmm. They see something in you that maybe you don't see in yourself. And then you got to believe in yourself to take the leap. And then just ask really good questions. I'll get better at that. <laughs> I'll get better at that. 